In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use R Markdown. Um, so R Markdown is um, kind of another file type that you can create um, in RStudio. Um, so you're um, probably at this point um, familiar with using an R script, which you can create by going up here to this Create dropdown. Um, R scripts are nice for just writing code. Um, you get the output down here in your console. Um, you can get your graphs over here in the viewer pane. Um, but then if you're trying to get this um, moved over into, say, a, like a Word document for something for a report, um, it's kind of tedious um, to save and move that stuff over. So it's going to be a lot handier to use a program like our Markdown, which allows you to kind of directly compile your code and all of your output um, uniformly into a file directly. Um, it's also going to have a lot of formatting options as well to kind of make it look nice. Um, a lot of people like to use R Markdown uh, for writing web pages, for writing, you know, even like writing a CV or a resume or something, you could use something like R Markdown as well. So it's, it's, it is kind of like a, um, you know, um, a, you know, not, so like you have Microsoft Word as a, a word processing program, and R Markdown can kind of accomplish a similar purpose if you know how to use code to format um, your document. So to make an R Markdown file, I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to choose R Markdown. Um, it will ask you for a title. This isn't super important because um, you don't necessarily need to keep it. You can change it, but I'm just going to say um, first Markdown. Um, if you want your author name to show up, you can keep that. Um, you can also just default to HTML output because um, it doesn't really matter. You can choose how you want to knit your file anyway, um, but HTML would be basically what you would use if you're creating a web page. Um, PDF and Word would be, you know, more typical if you're just kind of sharing a report. So I'll go ahead and just click OK. Um, all this stuff is going to show up on the top. It doesn't really matter, by the way, so, um, so I typically don't care about having my name on these kinds of things, so you can delete some of this. The only thing I would keep is the output. Um, these other three things you can just get rid of change or do whatever you want. Okay, so let's kind of talk about what's going on here. Um, so whenever you have an R markdown, there's going to be an option to knit. And knitting means to basically compile it into a Word or a PDF or an HTML. So I'm going to um, compile it to a Word just to kind of show you what this looks like. Um, it is going to prompt me to save this, so I'm just going to do uh, markdown uh, for a second. Um, so I'm just going to save it under the file name markdown. I'm going to knit this to a Word document, and you'll see um, what it's going to look like here. So it should come up. Yeah, oh, and it came up way over here. Um, so hopefully you can see this. Um, so here is the result of what's currently on this um, markdown file. So there's some text. There is my title, my name, the date. Again, that's optional stuff. Um, the plots that are coded in, as well as the code um, that was used to create it in this case. Um, so, so a lot of things kind of show up on there. Now, as you're coding, I'll just kind of mention this here, that you can also knit to an HTML directly in your viewer pane, which is really convenient. Um, so so I'm, I actually have this from the cogwheel. If you choose preview and viewer pane, I can knit, knit to an HTML. And what's going to happen here is my result is going to show up over here in the viewer pane. Uh, this is not really important. Um, I'm just going to say that. Um, so yeah, this is the same output. It just looks, it's just an HTML. And this is also nice as I kind of code my way through. It's easy to knit just directly over here until I'm ready to be done. Okay. Um, so the uh, pound signs or hashtags, if you call them that, um, are heading markers. So the more of these that I add, the smaller the heading is going to be. So, so this would be a little bit smaller. Um, there's also an R Markdown cheat sheet that you can use. Um, you can either look it up on Google, or you can go up here to Tools. You can go to, um, is it Tools? Oh, goodness, maybe it's Help. Actually, it's Help, yeah. Um, cheat Sheets. And you'll notice that there is an R Markdown cheat sheet that you can open up with a lot of formatting details that will open up in your web browser. Um, so yeah, it's over here on my web browser, which isn't really on the screen, um, but it, that's where you can find it. All right, 
So going through here, um, there is a default uh, option here. So this code chunk right here, you should probably just leave alone. Um, but what it's doing here is it's saying that um, by default, whenever you do a code chunk, um, you're going to have the code show up in addition to the output. Um, if for whatever reason you don't want to do that, you can change this to false as the norm, uh, but you can also choose specific code chunks to not show code or not show output or whatever. So if you go to this little cogwheel, maybe I want the maybe I want the summary output, but I don't want the code in my report for some reason. So then I'm going to go here and I'm going to say show output only, and you'll notice that echo equals false will now show up as kind of the, the option that I chose there. Um, you can do bolding and um, italics, by the way. So, so bolding is done with this um, the double um, asterisks. Um, um, italics would be done with um, single underscores around what you want to turn into um, italics. Um, let's see, I think that's it for just kind of general formatting. All right, so let's talk a little bit about coding. Um, so let's say that I'm just kind of going through, I'm writing my code, and I want to see what it looks like as I go. Um, you can always click the play button to run a particular code chunk. Um, you can also highlight it and, and run it, that's also fine, but the play buttons are really convenient there as well. Um, and then if you want this preview to go away while you're working, you can just click that, that X button. Now let's say that I want to make some new code. So obviously this is all kind of default, so I don't really need any of this. So let's say I'm ready to, to code. Um, I'm going to go up here to insert and I'm going to create a code chunk. And a code chunk is going to be marked in gray and it's going to have three backward tick marks at the beginning, three at the end, and in brack, uh, curly braces I should say, there's going to be a little R. And then occasionally if you want to like name your code chunk or you want to add options, kind of like we, we talked about in the cogwheel, they be listed afterwards. Um, but you know, again, that's just kind of extra stuff. Um, so let's say that I want to uh, load some data here. Now, um, if you're just using um, a script and you are loading data into your session of R and then just like pulling everything over to a Word document kind of manually, um, then you would just go to say your files pane and upload some data and that, that works fine. However, if I want to use data within the markdown and knit work that I'm using the data for, I am going to have to actually write the code chunk to load the data as code um, in my markdown somewhere. So to do that, uh, if I'm using say a CSV file, then I'm going to uh, use a, a command called read CSV. And then in parentheses, I'm going to do quotation marks in the name of the data that I am uploading. So let's say I want this goalies.csv data. Um, then I'm just going to write goalies.csv in quotation marks um, within parentheses. And then I'm going to name this as well. So let's say I'm just, I'm just going to name it goalies equals and then this command is going to upload that. Um, in addition, I should say that read CSV does require a package. It requires the library, or, or sorry, it requires the read R package. So I am going to need to run this as well before this in order for this to work. Um, so if I click play, um, it will load the data. Um, if I don't like this, um, if I don't want this to show up in my knitted file, by the way, this, this might be a good code chunk to, um, um, customize here. So maybe I want to, um, oops, sorry, I'm going to say show, uh, don't show warnings, don't show messages, and that will just ensure that I don't get that weird kind of um, loading data message or whatever in my knitted report. Now this is if I'm working with the CSV. Um, I might also be trying to load an Excel file um, quite commonly, so maybe I want to load this um, uh, class spring 2021 Excel file. So if I were to import this data, I will kind of point out to you that your code preview right here is sort of what you're, um, or actually is what you're embedding into your code chunk. So I'm going to save some time and just copy this over, and I'm going to click cancel, and I'm just going to copy and paste um, oop, does it let me do that? There we go. I'm just going to copy and paste that code directly there. Now, this is going to use the read Excel function, um, 
and I'm going to need the I'm going to need a library read XL as a package to use this function. And then I'm just using the name of the data set dot XLSX and that should work fine. Now, one other thing that I need to mention here, um, if you're loading data like this, you need to ensure that the data file is in the same folder as the markdown file that you created. So when you create this markdown file and you save it, put it in the same folder as the data that you are loading for this markdown file. Um, something that folks would recommend is that you create a new file every time you have, I'm sorry, a new folder for every R markdown that you ever make. And then you just name the folder what the project is. And then you're gonna have your RMD file, which is what this is, as well as any data and any knitted Word or PDF as well is going to be saved as a file in that folder. So that's a really good habit to be in if you're gonna do a lot of coding. If you're not doing a lot, you know, maybe you just put everything in one big folder, but, but over time, if you're like me, um, you should do multiple folders. Honestly, I'm pretty bad at that, to be honest. I, I get lazy and I just start throwing everything in the same folder until I clean it up. Um, but in general, it's good habit to make a new folder for every um, markdown file that you're making. Um, all right, um, so now that we've loaded that data, maybe I want to say something about it, like in this report, I'm going to be doing something. I don't know, maybe you don't wanna write anything, but okay. Um, let's make another R chunk. And now I'm going to make a graph using uh, maybe some of this data. So um, what I wanna do real quick, I do wanna view this goalies data. So I'm gonna just kinda open that up here. And this is a good uh, 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 message for you as well. Some of these commands like view um, is not something that you wanna keep in your markdown when you knit it. And that's because this is an RStudio specific command, right? This, this can't really knit into a report. Um, so make sure that you take these out um, before you knit. Just use it to, to you know, get your viewer window if that's what you'd like to do. Uh, but don't keep it in as, as Coke or else R Markdown is going to get really confused when it tries to knit that command. So maybe I want to make a, a graph where I'm comparing win results in relation to the number of minutes that a particular player is playing. Um, so I'm going to do ggplot data equals goalies. I think it's men y equals w. Something like this, if I get those right. Oh, it's capital M-I-N. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And again, I can just click the play button. It's going to show up right here in my as kind of a preview as well, which is nice. Um, everything looks nice. Um, again, if I, if I don't want the code chunk to show up and I just want the plot in my report, I can, you know, change that. But... But typically, if you're doing an assignment, we want you to, to use your code when possible. Uh, it's, it's helpful for us, so, so maybe just keep it in there. Um, yeah, and so I can add any customization that I want. Um, one other thing that I'll mention as well, um, just about code chunks and what to keep and not to keep. Um, if you um, are installing a package, um, that is also code that you cannot keep in your markdown when you try to knit it. So, so if you need a, to uh, install a package, either do it directly in your console, since it's a one-time thing, or if you use a code chunk, just make sure that you delete it, because again, the, the file will not knit if you have an install.packages command somewhere. Um, so I think that's about it. So I'm just gonna say a word about knitting here. So, um, so we talked about knitting to an HTML. That's really handy for, for knitting directly into your, um, into your viewer screen. You can also choose to, to knit it into a separate window as well. Um, oh, let's see what happened here. So error and ggplot. Oh, you know what? Good, good catch here. I need to have the library ggplot2 um, listed as code as well in my report. So even though I have run this earlier since I've had R open, it is not actually written in the R markdown right now. So R markdown is going to want that um, in order to knit this. So it's a good catch that I did that. All right. So, um, so here's all my stuff. 
you can see my code. Notice that the warning or error messages don't come up because I selected these options. Um, I have my beautiful um, graph and I am well on my way to um, making a good report. Okay, so a couple other things that I'll mention now is with knitting. Um, HTML we've talked about. You can also knit this in a separate window. That's fine and it will save. Um, but more commonly, you're probably going to want to save this as a Word or a PDF. So you can certainly knit this as a Word, no problem. You don't need anything to do that. If you want to knit as a PDF directly, though, which honestly looks pretty clean to me, I think a PDF looks a lot nicer than Word when you knit it, um, here's the thing. You're going to need to have either like MCTEC installed on your computer, or you're going to need to install a package called TinyTech that gives you some version of tech that lets you knit directly to a PDF. So I don't have that in this video, um, but there should be information um, on the Compass site or the course site um, where this video is posted if you're interested in doing that. I think it's really great. Um, if you enjoy coding, if you plan to use R Markdown kind of later down the road, I'd really encourage you to, to get that package so you can knit directly to a PDF. It will look a lot nicer. Otherwise, you can always just knit directly to a word and then save that as a PDF. It won't look as nice and professional, but it will, it will certainly do the job.